Centered in Love, we celebrate a world of harmony, peace, and abundance for all. We're so excited to have Denise here with us this morning, and we get to sing some of her original joy songs. So we hope you all stand up and join us. All right, and I think you probably know this one, so let's just all sing together. We know that wherever two or more gathered, spirit is definitely in that place. I got all like caught up in that. <laughs> we're trying something new because we're here kind of trying something new. And one of the things that we want to talk about is how is your life inspired? How has Columbine and how has being in this community brought you inspiration? So I have an anonymous quote that I want to read. And we're hoping that you will help participate in this, that you'll send us some little short story about how you've been inspired 
by Columbine Spiritual Center. It says, when I downsized my home at retirement, one of the treasures I lost was my garden. Weeding and caring for my flower beds gave me time to have contemplative and quiet. When I read the need for gardening help at Columbine, I volunteered, so I wanted to thank the well diggers, those that came before me, those who had a vision and planted these amazing gardens. Linda Wilkinson did that. Today it offers me an hour to drink in the, nat the natural beauty and gave me purpose and meditative peacefulness. With gratitude, a happy weeder, and with that, another Denise Rosier song. I am made of the light that hung the stars in the night. A perfect God since time began. I am I am one with the love that's holding all of us. It's power in my hands. Let's affirm these words together. I am. Thank you, Denise. It's beautiful. We are so blessed to have Denise with us today, filling in for Janice, who's on vacation. And we, we light our Christ candle. I invite you, if you're at home, to light one as well as we come into this time of prayer. I invite us all to take a deep cleansing breath. Feel yourself getting into that flow of life. Gently close your eyes if you're comfortable. Come to that place of, I am. I am. And sweet loving spirit, we are you. We are Spirit, I am spirit. I am that flame of the divine wanting to burn brighter, wanting to spread my warmth, wanting to spread my light, my awareness, my joy. I am. All that God is, all that spirit is, I am. 
an amazing expression of the oneness that connects us all. I am. And Spirit, we are grateful for as long as we can hold that knowing, I am. I am. Because we know in our humanness we are often challenged where we don't hold that flame bright, where it never is extinguished, but maybe it's not as bright as it could be or not as warm as it could be or not as light as it could be. And so for all those who are not feeling that flame within, we'll share ours. We share our light. We share our warmth. We share our hearts. That we share our I am with everyone on our prayer list and every prayer request in our prayer box. Anyone who is challenged, who is, in, who is suffering, who is in pain, who is not experiencing this flame of the divine. With gratitude, we hold this for ourselves for as long as we can stay awake to it, for as long as we can keep it lit, bright. We thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Pushing past the point of breaking The road is long, but I will make it That's who I am It's not this race, but how I'm running Not who I was, who I'm becoming Steady on, I'll finish strong On this path
We're so grateful to have you here, Denise. She just come off of our virtual convention, Unity Worldwide Ministries virtual convention, where she sang one of our guest artists. Beautiful, thank you. William Scott, no, Richard Scott William Hutchinson was born June 5th, 2020. I just read this article yesterday. He was born June 5th, 2020, 131 days early. He weighed 11.9 ounces. He was 10.2 inches in length. He could fit in the palm of your hand. He had 0% chance of survival. The doctor said zero. There was no way he was going to survive. On June 5th, 2021, he celebrated his first birthday. This little guy didn't give up. That life after birth for him was not easy, but he didn't give up. His parents didn't give up. His parents, because it was the pandemic last summer, were not able to stay in the hospital with him. So they had to drive from St. Cloud County, Wisconsin, to Minneapolis, where he was in the neonatal natal uh, intensive care unit every day for six months until he could go home. But what a celebration to celebrate his first birthday. He's considered the world's most premature baby. It's a remarkable birth story, remarkable story about a remar remarkable little boy who didn't give up. And I share that with you because we're using Elizabeth Lesser's book, Broken Open, and this section is about birth and death. And what's in between birth and death is where we all are, is the gift of life. It's life. So many times we think, well, we're done. We did all we came here to do, we're done. But we're still breathing, we're still here, we're still living, and we need to be alive with life. It's this cute cartoon I found in a, a book called Unstoppable. If you can read that. This guy's sitting on a cliff with a guru, and the, the guru says, here's the test to find out if your mission on Earth is finished. If you are alive, it isn't. If you are alive, you're not done. No matter what you may have accomplished, or no matter where you are in your life, if you're still breathing, you still got life. Life is still wanting to express more as you, through you. In this section of the book, Elizabeth Lesser talks about her father, who was a very strong personality, very active man. She said when he was 85, he went skiing all day, came home, had a dinner, went to bed, and didn't wake up. He passed away. She got the call early in the morning from her sister, and she said, that's not possible. My dad couldn't have died. My dad wouldn't die. He's not the type. <laughs> but he did. We all, we all will die one day. We all will pass away and move on. It's so surprising when somebody says, I didn't know that was going to happen. It will happen. But after he passed away, she started having dreams about him. And she said they didn't feel like dreams. They felt like visits. He was radiant. He was alive in her dreams. And this one in particular, she talked about where he was just full of joy and so handsome. And she started talking to him. And she said, tell me, Dad, what's it like in the afterlife? And he said, it's not what you think. 
you have to make your keep. And she said, you mean they have like money there in the afterlife? And he said, no, nothing like that, but you have to make your keep. He said it twice, you have to make your keep. Like this weekend, I have to go to Alaska and do some work. And I was thinking about that, you have to make your keep. You know, a lot of times we hear the phrase, you have to earn your keep. Earning being you have to, there's an exchange. You have to do something in order to have a living or something that will sustain you. But you have to make your keep is different. Make is to create. You have to make that which sustains you. You have to make your life. You have to make a life. No matter what realm you're in, it appears, you have to make a life. So often in life, we keep ourselves small. We keep ourselves in a container. We're comfortable. It's comfortable here. But life is calling us to be more than that. Life is always wanting to evolve and have us have a freer, fuller, bigger expression of spirit. We're here to live life. Didn't Jesus say we're here to live life and live it abundantly, to live it joyfully? Turn up that flame within and shine it outwards. That's what we're here to do in this lifetime. If we're still breathing, we can still do that. We had 15 months of isolation and keeping to ourselves and quarantine, and here we are. And as sad as the number of COVID deaths is, we have come here. We are here. We are born again, if you will. We have an opportunity to express ourselves in a new way, in a whole new way, born into new life. It's time to celebrate that we are alive. Cardinal Newman says in the early 19th century, fear not that life shall come to an end, but rather that it shall never have a beginning. So many of us don't really live our lives. We get comfortable. But life needs movement. It needs rebirth, constantly rebirthing. Reborn, getting reborn, getting to know yourself again. This is what this, this time in our lives, we have this opportunity to do this. Reborn, have a life after birth. Even when we have a kind of an, an awareness, a new awareness, we have birthed a new awareness. And then we look at our life and say, well, now what? What do I do with this new awareness? What do I do with this new life after birth? What possibilities and opportunities are before us? We often look for purpose, right? We look for purpose and meaning. Make our keep. Unity's third principle is that our thoughts determine the experience of our lives. So we can look on this time as, as an opportunity to expand, to grow, to be, to be in new ways, or we can not. How we think will determine what we experience. If we want to keep safe and small, that's okay. And it's comfortable. But we won't stretch our thinking. We won't grow. Or we could focus on a life that is worth, worthy of us. Focus on a life that we dream of living and step in that direction. Have a life after birth. 
I want to share a video with you that I found this week. A certain twin was talking to each other in the womb when the sister asked her brother, do you believe in life after birth? Her brother protested, no, no, this is all there is. It's pleasant and cozy here, and there's no reason to assume that there's something good on this place. His sister insisted, there must be something more than this. There must be something else. A place with lights where there's freedom to move. Still, she could not convince her twin brother. After some silence, her sister said hesitantly, I have something else to say, and I'm afraid you won't believe that either. But I think there is a mother. Her brother became furious. A mother, he shouted. What are you talking about? I've never seen a mother, and neither have you. Who put that idea in your head? As I told you, this place is all we have. Why do you always want more? This isn't so bad. We have all we need, so let's be content. The sister was quite overwhelmed by her brother's response and for a while didn't dare to say anything more. She couldn't let go of her thoughts and since she only had her brother to speak to, she finally said, I've heard that the mother is all around us and that it's her warmth that protects us and keeps us alive. As the brother was about to respond, he began to feel a pillow. He felt himself being sucked into the darkness and couldn't stop it. His sister too was being pulled along and advised him not to be afraid and said that she felt everything would be fine and before he knew it she disappeared entirely oh no he thought to himself my sister's gone she's dead what am i meant to do what is happening to me he suddenly saw a flash and was gone too upon arrival in the world and seeing his sister he quickly realized that she had been right all along how many times have you heard someone say that there's no empirical evidence for an afterlife, or for a god, or for any spirituality at all. Well, isn't that the same question the boy was asking in the womb? Perhaps there really is more to life than life itself. <laughs> I love that because that's exactly what we're talking about. There's more to life. There's more to life, but are you like the brother? No, it's comfortable here. I'm just going to stay right where I am. Or the sister, come on. We can have freedom. We can have movement. We can have light. We can look beyond what we see with our physical eyes. There's more to it than that. Do you feel life pulling you? Pulling you to be more? Do more? Have more? More freedom? more love, more joy. Someone who felt pulled in life in our Christian scriptures was Nicodemus. Now, if you know the story of Nicodemus, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. So metaphysically, he represents the intellectual part of us. He was curious, but he was intellectual. The letter of the law, the Pharisees. And he came to Jesus at night. He didn't want anybody to see that he was going to speak to Jesus. But he was curious, and he starts flattering Jesus, like, oh, you're, you're the one who God is working through. You have all these superpowers like God has, and you must really be the son of God. And Jesus was having none of that flattery. He, he just says to him, because he knew Nicodemus' question, in his heart was how do I, how do I become more? How do I come into greater awareness? How do I get beyond just this intellectual knowing? And he says to him very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born anew. Now the kingdom of God is our, is a Christ consciousness, is a spiritual awareness, it's a New approach to life, if you will. Seeing with the third eye. And Nicodemus, of course, what do you mean? How do I get born again when I'm old? I have to go back in my mother's womb? I mean, he didn't, really, he didn't get it at all. And Jesus says, you have to be born anew. Not with the flesh, but with the spirit. That life is constantly inviting us to be born anew, 
with spirit. Come into new awareness of who we are, of what we are. And what do we do with that when we get that? Just as we're coming out of the pandemic, how do we want to be now? How do we want to live now? I'm sure many of us have kind of looked at our lives and got reprioritized, evaluated. Now that we're moving in. Last week, or a couple weeks ago, was our Unity virtual convention. It was really good, really well done. Virtu a virtual convention, which I was like, eh. It was really good. <laughs> and we, one of our keynote speakers was Margaret Markison. She was a pastoral leader for 15 years, and now she's a coach to ministers. And she said, we all ask that big question of ourselves from time to time. What is my purpose? Why am I here? What, what meaning does my life have? And she said, as we're coming out of this pandemic, it's important to not try to answer that big question. It's too big a question for right now. And she said, instead, break it down. Break it down into a 90-day purpose. What is my purpose in the next 90 days? What do I want to be, do, and have in the next 90 days? It's much more manageable. And we take it step by step. And so during the, the, the keynote um, that was on Zoom, of course, she paused so we could write. Because she said, I want you to answer that question. And she gave us two minutes and she said, Write, start writing. And even if you're not, even if you think you're finished, keep writing. Keep writing. What do I want to be? What do I want to do? What do I want to have? And when it was all over, she, she took a quick poll and I looked at my list and mine were all do's. It was all about doing. And then when she polled everyone else and in the chat box, everyone saying, yeah, it was all a bunch of do statements. No, and she said, no, we want to start with B. Start with B. I want to be more loving. I want to be more of a presence. I want to be more present to people as I get to interact with them again. Start with the B. So I challenge you to start with the B. What do you want to be more of in the next 90 days? You have to make your keep. Create a life. Create a purpose. Give it meaning. One of the most common, the most common regret at the end of life is not living a true life, not being true to yourself, not living a life of your dreams. Dream, dream. We're doing Mary Morrissey's Prosperity Plus. We just started on Wednesday, and that's what this first one is all about, creating a vision for your life, dreaming. What would I love? How would I love my life to look? 50% of people do not have any idea what their dream life looks like. They've not, never given themselves permission to dream. Give yourself permission to dream. No matter where you are in life, we're still alive, right? We're still breathing. You're not done. Start building. Millard Fuller was born in 1935 in Alabama, and he was driven. In the 1960s, he was a self-made millionaire by the age of 29. He had a luxury home, a lake cabin, 2,000 2, acres of land, speedboats, luxury cars, and a dream and a goal of making $10 million in the 60s. And then he had a heart attack, not a physical heart attack, a heart attack of grief, a heart attack of sadness and regret 
when his wife, Linda, and their children left him because they didn't see him, because he was always working. And so she went to New York with the children, and he was left alone to ponder his life. And he started realizing that he had a very planned life, but this planned life had no meaning or purpose. And he knew that what he wanted was his wife and children back. So he called her up and said, I, I want to come to New York. She was there to, to speak to a minister to help, help her decide what to do next. And she said, OK. He went up there, and they talked and cried and were real honest with each other and decided to sell everything they owned. He went back to Georgia where he was, and he met a man named Clarence Jordan, who was wanting to build a house. There were, he was showing Millard and Linda a bunch of shacks, and he said, look how these people have to live. There's no electricity, there's no plumbing. I want to build a house for them. And so Millard started helping him. Millard and Linda both started helping him. And Clarence, unfortunately, had a heart attack during that first home construction. And he passed away. But Millard and Linda continued for four more years and built many houses. Then he thought, well, maybe I want to see if this works internationally. So he went to Africa, Central Africa, and started building homes there. And he lived there for three years. Came home, realized it was a project that had, had purpose, it had meaning, it was needed, and he formed Habitat for Humanity International. To date, they've helped more than 35 million people have a home. Millard rebuilt his life. He turned up that inner flame of the divine and found new purpose. And sometimes there's pain with that purpose. Think of labor pains. Any of you women who have had children, when we're birthing, there's, there are labor pains. When we're rebuilding, when we're being born or being reborn in life, sometimes there's pain. A week ago, Thursday, on the 17th, I had an infusion of reclast. I had mentioned to you Last summer, I think that I had been diagnosed with osteoporosis. I was angry, and I was like, how did this happen to me? You know, whatever. But <laughs> I knew that I was going to do this, have this infusion to help rebuild my bones. And I had to keep putting it off because of dental work that I was doing. But finally, on the 17th, I had it, 17th of June. And when I was there, the nurse said, you know, you may have some flu-like symptoms. You may get a fever and be achy, and, but you're going to be fine. I know it. And she goes, your bones may hurt a little, and the best thing to do is to move. It doesn't sound like it makes sense, but to move is the best thing for that. She said, but I can tell you're really active, so you're not, you're not going to have any problem whatsoever. So I go home Friday, Saturday, part of Sunday, yeah, the flu-like symptoms, the fever, the body aches, the nausea, all that. Monday, I felt great, went for a bike ride, went for a walk. Kevin and I were up in Breck, loved doing the Breck, the trails. Tuesday morning, I woke up, I could barely walk. It wasn't from the bike ride. It was in my bones. By Tuesday night, I was in so much pain, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't hardly move. My legs hurt, my feet hurt. Wednesday was probably the worst day. It was really hard to move, really hard to walk. The stairs were especially difficult. Thursday, I couldn't bend my fingers. My hands were swollen. 
especially this hand, this thumb, that's about as far as it could get. And I thought in my meditation, okay, what meaning do I want to give this? I didn't know this was going to happen. I had heard it happen to someone else, but I, I listened to the nurse. You're an active person. You're not going to have any problem. And I thought, what if this is the way my life is going forward? What if, I, what if this never goes away? And I thought, well, you know, out of chaos, the world was built. So out of chaos, I will rebuild myself. And I thought, started thinking about my bones and how they're, you know, they're, they're, they're the structure of us. They're the structure of our bodies. And when we're rebuilding and strengthening, there's some pain there. But I kept imagining my bones just getting stronger, filling in those gaps. And yesterday I felt better, and today it's like, look at my thumb. <laughs> I'm fine today. Not 100%, but, but from where I was on Thursday and Friday, it's amazing. But, yeah, thanks. But, you know, we have an opportunity to not let things crumble to rebuild ourselves, to rebuild our lives, to rebuild Columbine. The staff and I are, are gonna go up to Grand Lake in a, in a few weeks and have like a brainstorming session and, and I've asked the staff and uh, Scott and I too to all jot down what are we spending our time on? We wanna make sure that we're spending our time on using our gifts in the best way possible for this community. And also, if we were starting over, what would we do? What elements do we want to keep? What elements need to let go of? And how do we want to be moving forward? If you have ideas, see any of the staff, we will take all ideas are valid. We want to rebuild stronger. The time to do that is now. Not when things maybe get worse, not saying that they're gonna get worse, but the time to rebuild is when you have some momentum and we've got some excitement about coming back together in person and let's celebrate that and let's build on that momentum and let's make this a thriving ministry. We don't wanna be Sadly, like the condo complex in Miami, the structure fell apart. Rebuild. Find meaning. Find purpose. Elizabeth Lesser says in Broken Open, if only people realized what they had in life, they would not be able to contain their joy. I can't tell you how joyful I felt this morning walking. You th we take things for granted until they're taken away from us. The joy of gathering in this, in this sanctuary again because we couldn't for so long. We get it, we're getting a new start. So let's celebrate that and work on that. So do you realize what you have in life? Or are you taking it for granted? We don't realize it until things are taken away often. We create our experience of life with our thoughts. So look at your life. You'll know where your thoughts have been. If you don't like what you're seeing, change your thinking. Change your thoughts, change your attitude. Be reborn, have a new approach. A new way of thinking, a new way of seeing. Are you making your keep? 
experiencing life after birth or just going through the motions in comfort and safety. We all have this opportunity to come into a new expression of life with joy, with meaning, with purpose, and come into this new awareness of who and what we are. And we are beautiful, you all are beautiful expressions of the divine. That flame of God is within each one of you. And I hope that you let it burn brightly. Celebrate that spirit within. Celebrate and bring a new enthusiasm to life. I want to move us into a time of meditation now, so I invite you to keep that celebration feeling alive in your hearts. Take a deep breath and allow yourself to feel that flow in this flow of life. In this flow of life, I invite you to gently close your eyes and say to yourself, I am enthusiastic, alert, alive, and joyful. I make my keep by giving life to my longings, by turning up the flame of the divine within. We've been given the gift of life. There's still more for us to do, to be, to have, as long as we are alive, our mission is not over. So ask yourselves, what do I want to be in the next 90 days? What do I want to do in the next 90 days? And what do I want to have in the next 90 days? How will I turn up that inner flame of the divine and truly live with enthusiasm, with alertness, with gratitude for life? There is life after birth. What do you want yours to be? I invite you to Become aware of any impulses, any guidance as we sit together in the silence.
to me can't you see you're everything I hope for you're everything I need you are so beautiful to Spirit in me, live out in the open, shine from my life like the sun, give of your goodness, conquer the darkness, Spirit of light and love, Spirit, Spirit in me. Give Spirit in me, oh Spirit, Spirit in me. Thank you so much, Denise. Somebody asked where they find you. You have deniserosier.com, right? Yes. Yes, so if you want more Denise, check her out. You could, uh, you could hear me on Spotify and Pandora, too, or you could say, hey, Alexa, play Denise Rosier. That's and awesome. <laughs> We're working on getting a Columbine Spiritual Center podcast so we can do the same thing. So this is the time in our service where we so gratefully receive your love offerings and your blessings. And it is just with such great gratitude that we thank you for supporting Columbine Spiritual Center and being here in the sanctuary and everybody who's online, either right this second watching or watching later. Oh, I'll, I'll move this way. Okay. All right. Or watching later. And we just, we thank everyone for being part of this community here and anywhere that you are. So thank you for being part of us. We thank you. So let's say our offertory blessing together. God's love has always met and will always meet all my needs. I give freely. I receive abundantly and I am grateful. So our announcements today, um, first and foremost, if you want to know what's going on, just like Denise has her website, we have our website, and we really encourage you to go to columbineunity.org and see what's happening. If you want to look at past talks, you can check out past talks. If you're new with us um, on our online, it's really great if you want to sign up and get emails um, so that you can be part of our communication. And then um, anything that's going on, you can register, you can sort of see what's happening. So check out the website for sure. Next is starting next week, we are moving to what has been our traditionally our summer schedule, which is one service at 10 a.m. And I encourage you to come next week because there's a really special guest minister, Reverend Rachel Harrison. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> so I'm going to be speaking next week as my first time here at Columbine Spiritual Center, speaking as a minister, a guest minister, and I'm beyond excited and really nervous at the same time. So I look forward to seeing everybody next week. So we hope everybody will come and join us online at, at 10 or here in person at 10. No registration required for either one. And then we're going to have a great fellowship um, afterwards. And we're hoping people will start bringing food back. And we're just coming back in powerful, strong ways. So we're looking forward to that. As we come back, we need volunteers. So I just want to thank all my volunteers that helped me today in greeting, the volunteers that helped in fellowship to set up and to clean up, and everybody that, that it takes to do everything, including the beautiful gardens outside. We need help um, maintaining those gardens, deadheading and watering and weeding. So we're really looking for more volunteers. And if you're looking for a way to be of service, I encourage you to come and talk to me, and we can figure out how to plug you into our system. Next is Sue mentioned Prosperity Plus. So this is Prosperity Plus One. We are having it in person here at Columbine. There's still time to join us. If you are finding that you have that pool after listening to Sue's talk and you say, who do I want to be? Come be with us and join the group and we can do that together. So we're really looking forward to that experience. And so there's still time to register. And then Summer Potlucks are back. Yay! So Piri Jensen, stand up Piri. Piri is our new coordinating coordinator for potlucks. We're looking for August and September potlucks and we're having them at homes and we have two potlucks in July and the registrations um, will be available to register for. The first one is at Reverend Scott's house and Stu's house in Grand Lake on Saturday the 17th, and it's gonna be a lunch, and we encourage everybody to come up and enjoy the beautiful day at the lake. And then the next one is Saturday the 31st in the evening after we do a volunteer project um, at his house in North Boulder and on the 31st. So we would love for everyone to come to those, which brings me to, I still need a Swallow, okay. So which brings me to um, on the 31st, if anybody was here back in March of 2020 and we did the Colorado Feeding Kids Meal Assembly, we had 100 people in Foss Hall and we had raised, I think, five or $6,000 for that and we hand packed all the meals that get sent out to families in need. And it's an incredible program. Earl Hauserman is on the board of that nonprofit and is um, putting together this, this activity. So we need to raise $6,000 to be able to pack 50,000 meals. That is an incredible need in our, in our area. We are so lucky, so many of us are so lucky to not have to think about it, and there are so many people that are not in that space. So if you have money to donate, time to donate, we ask that you register to do both of those things, hopefully, and join us on the 31st here at Columbine to pack meals. Okay, and then do we, Beth, are you our prayer chaplain this morning? So Beth is our prayer chaplain this morning, and she will pray with you here in the sanctuary. And we invite everybody who's here to fellowship, and we invite everybody who is online. We hold you in our hearts. There is Zelloship afterwards at 1215, which is Zoom Fellowship. And we just thank you all for being here, and we love you, and thank you for being part of Columbine. So let's sing the peace song.
The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Amen. Bye, everybody online.